All right, so we are in this series. We're starting a brand new series called There's an App for That. And those of you uh, with a smartphone, I guess that'd probably be most of you. I don't know if any, does anybody still have a flip phone? Okay, so most of you can uh, relate to uh, what we're going to be talking about because when you talk about apps, there are literally apps for everything. And so the five weeks that we're going to be going through this series, we're going to be taking the, the idea and the concept of an app and applying it to God's Word and some of it applying to what we do here and what we believe. And so today, the app that we're going to jump off into is the Settings app. And we'll get into that, but there are apps for everything. I mean, you can shop for clothes or shoes with an app. I mean, you can order food through an app. I learned just a couple of weeks ago, uh, well, actually about last week, that there is a rain gauge app, which is crazy to me because typically you have something that catches rain, but it goes off of your location and where you are and how much rain you received over the last 24 hours. It's actually kind of cool. There, you can translate languages with apps. Uh, I mean, if, if you think about it, with this phone and everything that you have, all the apps that are on there, there is almost anything that you can do in here. Th there's virtually nothing that you can't do. I mean, obviously, you can't brush your teeth with it yet. Um, but there is so many things right in the palm of your hand that you have the power to do. And you can even, listen, if you guys missed last week or the last couple weeks, or if you're going to miss next week, you can even download the Heritage app and you can keep up with what's happening here at Heritage Church. You're welcome. See, I know, that's right. Uh, easy way for you to keep up with what's happening here at Heritage. So if you don't have it, you should download it. But we're going to be talking about throughout the course of this series about apps and about how we believe what the Apostle Peter says, that we've been given everything pertaining to life and godliness. We already have it. Just like you already have everything in the palm of your hand with this phone. I mean, imagine calling uh, Apple Care or um, Samsung or whatever uh, phone you have. Imagine calling them and saying, hey, um, could you guys develop an app that would tell me how much rainfall there is? What are they going to say? There's an app for that. You already have it. It's already there. Take advantage of it, right? And so as we progress through this series and we look at the different apps and the different things uh, as we relate it to what we believe and what we have and how it relates and connects with our lives, then we're going to be looking about how God has already given us everything pertaining to life. Now, we had a lot of fun today. And we will continue to have fun today throughout the course of the morning. And I hope you enjoy yourself. And we want church to be fun. I mean, we believe that you can have fun when you come to church. We do a lot of crazy things. Uh, just some of the stuff we did today is just a picture of some things that we will do from time to time. Because we do believe that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we can express that in many different ways. But if what we do is not founded on truth... And God's word, then it's just a song and dance and it's just a gimmick and a shtick that is a, a dog and pony show that has no substance to it. So everything that we do, even in the times when we have fun and, you know, we wear our favorite team's gear or we, you know, the kids in the back, they dress up in, in Halloween costumes or uh, we do different songs, whatever it is throughout the course of the year. We do it for a, a purpose and a reason. Sometimes it's just to have fun. But it's all founded on something. And I want to talk about today what that is that it's founded on. Everything that we do. Because like a phone, we have a setting. And the settings are what operates a phone. And a setting for us and a setting for any church that you may go to is what determines how it operates. And if you have an Apple phone, you're familiar with iOS right? iOS is the operating system for Apple. Now, contrary to what you might think, it didn't start from iPhone and iPad because that didn't come out till later. It was with the Mac and Steve Jobs came out and said, the, with the excitement of the internet back in the 90s, we're going to combine that with the innovation of Apple and we have 
the iMac, and from there the iOS is developed. So you learned something new today that doesn't have anything to do about Jesus. So uh, you're welcome for that. But people associate it with the iPhone and the iPad because it is the operating system that the iPhone and the iPad use. Now, today, we're going to be talking about God's operating system because He has an operating system, and His is capital iOS because He is the great I Am. See what I did there? So we're going to talk about His operating system because He does have settings that determine how we operate and how He operates with us. Now, before Jesus... The iOS that God released was the law. And in this law, God gave man over 600 laws that he had to follow. 600 of them. Now, there's no way that man could have ever kept those laws. Every single one of them. Because the law is holy. And the holiness is the standard. And the expectation is if you are going to be holy, you have to uphold the law. Every letter of it. Well... Obviously, man couldn't do it, so man started coming up with ways that they thought were going to be um, kind of circumventing, if you will, or ways of getting around doing certain things. So man released an update to God's operating system, and we have the law 1.1, and it's traditions. So man brings in his traditions. Man brings in the things that he wants to add to what God already uh, instituted and said, you've got to follow these things. So man came up with their own traditions and things they, they, that were important to them that they wanted to impose on other people. And then time goes on, and what happens? Well, we can't keep up with the law. Well, we certainly can't keep up with man's traditions that are added on to it. So man said, all right, let's release a new update. So we got the law 1.2. Let's add some rituals to that. On top of what God already demands... Let's add to what we've already added to the traditions. Let's add some rituals onto that. And then let's see how that works. And then man says, we can't do it. So then man comes back and says, all right, here we go. Another update. This will fix it, right? The law 1.3. Let's add some demands on top of the traditions and the rituals that we've already added on top of God's law. And let's see how that works in our economy. Well, as you all know, there's no way that it can work. You all have tried some of that. Many of you have. You've been in environments where you have been in this setting where a a church or a religious organization operates under these settings. And the settings in this iOS with the law is condemnation. Do we have that? Get the picture in your mind. The setting for the law was condemnation. Added on top of the law, the traditions, the rituals, and the demands of man, you couldn't keep up. You couldn't do it. You couldn't uphold all these expectations. So God says, all right, enough's enough. It's time to release a whole new operating system. So he does. And he comes out with iOS 2.0, and it's Jesus. And the settings under this operating system... Is freedom. Where before, you're under the demands of the law and there's no freedom in that because you have to do what someone else tells you to do. And if you don't do it, there is condemnation that comes along with that. And so Jesus said, I'm going to release a new way of operating and it's going to be through Jesus. And there's going to be freedom in that. And everything that we do here at Heritage stems off of our belief and understanding of the freedom that we have in Christ. Because you need to know that you are free. You need to know that you've been set free. And that it has nothing to do with you. And it has everything to do with what Jesus did. And I want to use a story uh, by the name of Lazarus. Many of you may know the story of Lazarus. You may just know that Lazarus uh, had died and Jesus raised him from the dead. But Lazarus, Jesus got word about Lazarus, and he didn't run immediately to where he was. He waited. 
And so he gets there, and the, the family members, the friends, the people around, they're frustrated that Jesus didn't come sooner. And by now, Lazarus had been in the tomb four days. So he was dead. He wasn't any getting around how dead Lazarus was. He was there four days, which I believe is part of the reason that Jesus waited was so there was no question that Lazarus was just taking a long nap or maybe was in a comatose state. He was dead. And the friends and family, that they were frustrated and they expressed that frustration to Jesus. They said, Jesus, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Said Jesus, if only you had come sooner, you could have saved Lazarus, which is curious to me because they believed that he could have kept Lazarus from dying. But in their minds, they couldn't see how Jesus could raise Lazarus from the dead. Jesus told them, Roll the stone away, and I'm going to raise him from the dead. And in the midst of their doubt, they rolled their stone away. And Jesus goes in, and he says these words in John. Look at what he says here. John 11, the dead man came out. You, you've probably heard it say, Lazarus, come forth, right? The good um, King James Version, all right? He says, the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Now, these are the grave clothes that someone would be buried in. The strips of linen, cloth around his face. You get the picture of, um, and of course now kids today, um, they, they have the zombies. But when we were growing up, we had the mummies, right? And you had this picture of the mummies that were wrapped in linen cloths that had their head wrapped. You could see their eyes, right? And they're walking around like this. Right? I mean, that's the picture you get, but that's the grave clothes that you would have been buried in. And so Jesus says, he comes out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. He's walking out with these grave clothes on. And it's a picture of you and me and the grave clothes that we wear that we had on when we were crucified with Christ. Because Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Paul is very clear. He says, you have been crucified with Christ. If you've put your faith in Jesus, and you've expressed with your mouth that He is Lord, you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you have been crucified with Him. Paul goes on to tell us in Romans 6 that we were united in death with him. That we were united in his burial. That we were united in his resurrection. But you've been set free. You've been set free because you were crucified. The old was done away with. Just like the old operating system that was instituted under the law with condemnation, Paul tells us that there is therefore now, under this new operating system, under Jesus, in your freedom, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So we, we've been made new. We have been set free. But what have we been set free from? Well, we've been set free from those grave clothes. Here's, here's what they are. It's the shame, the guilt, the condemnation, the religious performance, the habits, the sin patterns, trying to please man, the traditions and rituals and demands of, uh, of man, trying to please man. All of these things that may bind you, that may keep you, that may hold you back from walking in your freedom in Christ, you've been free from these things. Whatever else it is that may be in your life that you've been bound to your entire life, in Christ, you've been set free. But here's the reality of it. We've been crucified with Christ. We were buried with Christ. We were raised. 
to walk in newness of life in Christ. But sometimes we keep our grave clothes on. Sometimes we allow someone else to wrap us back up with these linens and these cloths and suffocate us and bind us and keep us from our freedom. And we walk out of this grave when we were crucified with him. And just like with this phone, the moment you buy this phone, you have everything that it offers at your disposal. You just might not take advantage of it because you don't know. what it, I did, You know what? I had no idea how much rainfall I got at my house until last week. And I downloaded the app. And I thought, huh, now I know how much rain I get. I don't know what I'm going to do with that information. But I got it now. I've had it since the day I bought this phone. I just didn't know it. I was having to rely on some of my friends posting it on Facebook, telling me how much rain they got and hoping I got close to that much. The moment you put your faith in Jesus, the moment you become crucified with him, the moment you are buried with him, the moment you are raised to walk in newness of life, you are given everything that you need pertaining to life and godliness. And what Jesus tells Lazarus in this very next passage, and what he tells the people around Lazarus, I think is what is, is Jesus talking to us as pastors, our staff here at Heritage, our elders, our small group leaders, our ministry team leaders, our partners. This is Jesus' command to us. Look at what he says. The last half of 1144. Take off the grave clothes. Yours might say, unbind him and let him go. Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Take off the, 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 the sin condemnation, the guilt, the shame, the performance trap. Take off the demands of man. Take off the rituals of man. Take off trying to please anybody and everybody that you come across. Take off the grave clothes and set them free. We take that very seriously here at Heritage. And Paul tells us in Galatians 5 why we were set free. Look at what he says. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. When you were crucified with Christ, when you were buried with Him, when you were raised with Him, you were set free to be free. So, now that you have done that, now that you have been set free, now that you have put your faith in Jesus, don't Put your grave clothes back on. They stink. I think he's telling pastors and church leaders, when you have someone come in that has been under condemnation because they've been operating under an old system, old settings, unbind them. Set them free. And we sang this morning. I don't know if you, some of you guys may not like really engage. I wish you would sing more and read the lyrics because we're very intentional about the songs that we sing and how cohesive they are and what we're talking about for the day. And today we sang the song, Who You Say I Am. In John 8, look at what the apostle says. If the Son makes you free, if the Son makes you free, notice who's doing the action there. Not you. <laughs> Not if you set yourself free. If the Son sets you free, 
through your union and his death, burial, and resurrection. If he sets you free, then you will be free indeed. If you've been set free, if you have been loosed from the grave clothes, be free. Be who you are. But you can't be who you are if you don't know who you are. So who are you? We sang about that today, too. Some of y'all are thinking, why did we sing that song? So now when you hear it, you'll think, I'm free in Christ. See how we twisted that around for you? Because here's what you need to understand. I want you to, if you don't get anything else out of this, get this, and maybe it'll remind you of everything else that we talk about. You can't be free if you don't know who you are. And you can't be you if you don't know that you're free. You can't be free if you don't know who you are. And you can't be you if you don't know that you're free. Because there have been probably plenty of religious leaders that have not told you that you're free. They've put extra grave clothes back on you to try to bind you, to try to keep you from being free. Why is it? Let me ask you this. How many of you have ever had some of your friends tell you, hey, listen, I hear that you're growing in your understanding of your freedom in Christ. Man, congratulations on, on that freedom that you've got. Anybody ever told you that? I mean, like not in your small group or something like that? It's a shame, right? I mean, most of the time, what do they say? Well, y'all better be careful over there. I don't know why people that don't go to Heritage talk like that, but they do. Anybody watching doesn't, they go, anybody that goes somewhere else, they're not watching anyway. <clears throat> I don't know, y- y'all over there telling people they're free in Christ, preaching all this freedom and grace, and all, people are going to start taking advantage of it. Is it not curious to you that people encourage you to take advantage of the freedoms you have in this country? I mean, we have freedoms like to vote. We have freedoms to bear arms. We have freedoms of speech. We have freedoms to a trial by jury of our peers. We have freedoms of due process. People say, take advantage of those freedoms. Take advantage. Take advantage of it. Utilize that freedom. Exhaust that freedom. But when we come to our freedom in Christ, what do they say? (laughs) You start talking about your freedom in Christ, people are going to take advantage of it. Let me clear the air here for you. I believe that if you preach God's grace, if we teach the freedom that you have in Christ to its fullest extent, and I don't think we ever will, but as full as we possibly can comprehend, some of you will take advantage of it. I believe that. Because I believe that if nobody is taking advantage of God's grace and the freedom that you have and the liberty that you walk in, then we're not preaching it to its extent. Go to the New Testament. The the early church was full of problems and issues and, and, and things that Paul and Peter and James and John, they all had to deal with it all because they preached freedom in Christ Paul talked about how you have been set free for freedom. John said that if the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. And they had all kinds of problems. I'm not asking for those problems. (laughs) But I'm telling you, it doesn't surprise me. And I believe the more we understand The more we preach, the more we teach, the more we share about the freedoms in Christ, that people will take advantage of it. And you say, well, Matt, that might lend itself to people thinking that they can just do whatever they want to do. I love this conversation. I do. I love it. I love it. Because what are people doing right now anyway? They're doing whatever they want to do. But what the concern is, is what someone wants to do. 
Because this is where my mind opened up when I got it. Not, some of you are going to hear this today, and you're not going to get it. But when I understood this truth about my freedom in Christ, it changed my world completely. A man after God's own heart, King David, wrote these words in Psalm 37, 4. I hold these words dear to my heart. Look at what he says. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires, the wants, the things you want to do. He will give you the desires of your heart. You say, well, Matt, you can't do just whatever you want to do. Well, well, let me ask you this. Let's just, like, put it in practical terms for you and me. I want to be faithful to my wife. So you're telling me I can't do what I want to do? You see how stupid it gets when we start going down that road? Because then we start having to do religious gymnastics. Right? And we have to dance around, well, if you want to do that, then you can do that. But if you want to do the other, then then you can't do that. I don't want to do that stuff. Now, sometimes I do some stupid things. Sometimes I say some stupid things. Sometimes I walk around with some grave clothes stuck to the bottom of my foot, pulling it around. But that's not my heart's desire. When you delight in the Lord, when you delight in the Lord, when you go to His Word, when you spend time in in, in conversation with Him, when you spend time meditating on what His Word has to say, when you spend time in fellowship with other believers, coming here is part of that. I only got you for about 40 minutes every week. It's part of the process and the journey. But when you're delighting in the Lord, we believe you can just do whatever you want to do because He's put those desires in your heart. And you have been set free. And not just free from the grave clothes. That's part of it. You've been set free from these grave clothes, from all those things that have bound you for so long. You have been set free, but you've also been set free into something. For instance, you're free to love. You're free to love others in a way that makes them curious about Jesus. Regardless of what they're doing or where they are. And, and I, I, don't, I think there are gray areas in Scripture because God leaves it up to our discernment and our maturity and His Spirit speaking to us in a circumstance. Everybody wants a black and white because you want to go back to a law to tell me what to do and not to do. I think God wants us to delight in Him and allow Him to speak to our hearts and Him guide us in the things we want to do, including what it means to love someone in a way that makes them curious about the Jesus that we walk in freedom with. We're free to love. We're free to forgive. It's not a command. Well, what about the command? If you forgive others, then God will forgive you. And if you don't forgive others, then God's not going to forgive you. So my security and my salvation hinges on whether or not I choose to believe someone. Well, not the security, but your fellowship. Let's stop doing the dance moves. When you were set free, you were free to forgive when people tell you not to because it doesn't make any sense because somebody's hurt you because somebody's offended you because somebody's made you mad because somebody posted something that you didn't like somebody did something that you didn't agree with people you don't even know some of y'all need to forgive a whole bunch of strangers (laughs) you're free to forgive somebody says i wouldn't forgive him okay but i've been set free and i can let that go and i'm free to forgive free to serve not because you have to not because it's a demand of man that if you don't do this 
God's going to get you. No, you're free. And everybody has a heart towards serving in different areas. That's why we make up a body that functions in so many different ways. The head is, is Jesus that operates everything else. But some of you have a heart to serve in, in areas that I wouldn't think twice if somebody offered the opportunity. No thanks. I appreciate it. What do you think about teaching 8th grade science? <laughs> no thanks. I don't like my own 8th grader some days. You're free to serve. Walk in that freedom. Here's one that makes some people uncomfortable. You're free to obey. You're free to obey. You say, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. Because whether you follow in the, 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 the commands and you follow in the instruction and you follow in the urgings of the New Testament and, and what the apostles communicated is a way for us to experience the life of God here on this earth, whether you do those things or not doesn't change the fact that you're still free. It doesn't change the fact that you've still been given everything for life and godliness. You're free to, somebody wants to, to try to condemn you or try to um, shame you. Why are you always going to church on Sundays? Why are y'all going to that small group? Why do you give up an extra hour and help with the kids in the back? Because you want to. <laughs> Seems kind of simple. But if you're delighting in the Lord and he puts that in your heart and that's what you want to do, do it. Isn't that something? I'm telling you, guys, if you will get this, guys, it will completely change your, your perspective. It will change your life. There's a couple more I want to talk about, though. You're free to live. You're free to live here and now. We've been given everything for life and godliness. That's life here, now. These mortal bodies, we've been given everything we need to live now. And because you've been set free, you are free to live in whatever the desires God puts in your heart. A couple more. You're free to let others be. This is a whole message, but I don't want to spend all day on it. I only got a couple minutes left. There are going to be a lot of things that a lot of people do that you don't agree with. There are going to be a lot of things that a lot of people do that you wish that you could change what they do. And you can make a decision to either go down the road of trying to change their mind, change their actions, change their perspectives, change who they are, change what they do, and wear yourself out because you don't have the power to. Or you can rest and the freedom that you have to let others be and allow God to work on their heart and allow God to, to change whatever he sees fit needs to be changed. Last one, we're free to be who we are. You're free to be you. You're free to be who you are. But you can't be who you are if you don't know who you are. And you can't be free if you don't know that you've been set free. So if you're here or you've been coming and you're like, I'm still trying to figure out what Heritage is about. Everything that we do here at Heritage, we want you to know this. We want you to be free to be you because you've been set free. We want you to be free, to be you, because you have been set free. We want you to just be you. We want you to know that you've been set free. And I make this promise to you. Our elders make this promise to you. Our staff makes this promise to you that we will not grab strips of cloth and bind you again 
with the grave clothes. That what we do here at Heritage, everything that we do here at Heritage is about you understanding that you've been set free. And if you're here today and you've got those grave clothes on and you're bound up and you're tight and you're suffocating, we want to unbind you and we want to set you free. In the next several weeks, as we go through this series, as we look at some of the different apps that we got to download, that we got to look at, we're going to be talking about what life in this freedom looks like. So I hope you'll join us and I hope you'll bring some friends that have these grave clothes bound tightly around them. Bring them and partner with us to set them free. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this new operating system that you have us under, Father, where we can walk in freedom of who we are. Thank you for the encouragement of the Apostle John that says, whoever you have set free through your Son, Father, that we shall be free indeed. Thank you for the words of the Apostle Paul that have stood the test of time that says it is for freedom that we've been set free. Father, I pray as we continue to grow in our understanding of our freedom in Christ, Father, that everything that we do, that we will never, ever, ever lose sight of the reality that we are free and that we can partner together to unbind and to take off the grave clothes of those who are walking around in an old operating system that doesn't even give life. Father, I thank you and I praise you for all the joy that we have in you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.